Hello guys and gals, and this is part 28 of our reading of the Harvard Classics. Now we're going to go over what the Harvard Classics actually are. The Harvard Classics are composed of the Apology, Phaedo, and Credo of Plato, translated by Benjamin Jowett, the Golden Sayings of Epictetus, translated by Hastings Crosley, and the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, translated by George Long, edited by Charles W. Eliot, LLD, with introduction and notes. We are going to go over the copyright information, which I just screwed up. There you go. Clearly says here that it's copyright 1980, 1937, and 1907 by Grawley Enterprises Incorporation and manufactured in the United States of America. Now we left off at number 14, I believe, so we are going to keep going. Number 14. Reason and the reasoning art, philosophy, are powers which are sufficient for themselves and for their own works. They move, then, from a first principle, which is their own, and they make their way to the end, which is proposed to them. And this is the reason why such acts are named um, catathorsis, or right acts, which words signifies that they will proceed by the right road. Number 15. None of these things ought to be called a man's which do not belong to a man, as man. They are not required of a man, nor does man's nature promise them, nor are they the means of a man's nature attaining its end. Neither then does the end of man lie in these things, nor yet that which aids to the accomplishment of this end, and that which aids towards the end is that which is good. Besides, if any of these things did belong to a man, it would not be right for a man to despise them and to set himself against them, nor would a man be worthy of praise who showed that he did not want these things, nor would he who stinted himself in any of them be good, if indeed these things were good. But now, the more of these things a man deprives himself of, or of other things like them, or even when he is deprived of any of them, the more patiently he endures the loss, just in the same degree he is a better man. Number 16. Such as are thy hab habitual thoughts, such also will be the character of thy mind. For the soul is dyed by the thoughts. Die is the is then with a continuous series of such thoughts as these. For instance, that where a man can live, there he can also live well. But he must live but he must live in a palace. Well then, he can also live well in a palace. And again Consider that for whatever purpose each thing has been con um, constituted, or constituted, for this it has been um, constituted, and towards this it is carried, and its, and its end is in that towards which it is carried, and where the end is, there also is the advantage and the good of each thing. Now the good for the reasonable animal in, is society, for that we are made for society has been shown above. It is not plain that the inferior exists for the sake of the superior, but the things which have, li have life are superior to those which have no life, and to those which have life, the superior are those which have reason. Number 17. To seek what is impossible is madness, and it is impossible that the bad should not do something of this kind. Number 18. Nothing happens to any man which, oh, which he is not formed by nature to bear. The same thing happens to another, and either be because he does not see that they see 
that they have happened or because he would show a great spirit, he is firm and remains unharmed. It is a shame when that ignorance and conceit should be stronger than wisdom. Number 19. Things themselves touch not the soul, not in the least degree, nor have they admission to the soul, nor can they turn or move the soul. But the soul turns and moves itself alone, and whatever judgments it may think proper to make, such it makes for itself and the things which present, uh, present themselves to it. Number 20. In one respect, man is the nearest thing to me, so far as I must do good to men and endure them. But so far as some men make themselves obstacles to my proper acts, man becomes to me one of the things which are indifferent, no less than the sun or wind or a wild beast. Now it is true that these may impede my actions, but they are no, but they are no impediment no impediments to my effects and disposition, which have the power of acting conditionally and changing. For my mind can, um, converts the changes every hindrance, oh, my converts and changes every hindrance into its, oh, sorry. For my mind converts and changes every hindrance to its activity into an aid, and so that which is a hindrance is made a furtherance to, to an act and that which is an obstacle on the road helps us on this road. Number 21, reverence that which is best in the universe, and this is that which makes use of all things and directs all things. And in like manner, also reverence that which is best in thyself, and this is, is of the same kind as that. For in thyself also, that which makes us makes use of everything else, is this, and thy life is directed by this. Number 22, that which does not harm us, oh wait, that which does no harm to the state does not harm, no, does no harm to the citizen. In the case of every appearance of harm, apply this rule. If the state is not harmed by this, neither am I harmed. But if the, but if the state is harmed, Thou must not be angry with him who does harm to the state. Show him where his error is. Number 23. Often think of, this do, of the rapidity with, uh, with which things pass by and disappear, both the things which are and the things which are produced. For substance is like a river in a continual flow, and the activities of things are in constant change, and the cause, and the causes, work in infinite varieties, and there is hardly anything which stands still. And consider this, which is near to the this boundless abyss of the past and of the future, in which all things disappear. How then is he not a fool who is puffed up with such things as, or plagued about them? or makes himself miserable, for they vex him only for a time and a short time. Number 24. Think of the universal substance of which thou hast a very small portion, and of universal time of which a short and indivisible, indivisible interval has been assigned to thee, and of that which is fixed by destiny, and how small part of it thou art. Number 25. Does another do me wrong? Let him look let him look to it. He has his own disposition, his own activity. I now have what the universe what the universal nature wills me to have, and I do what my nature now wills me to do. Number twenty six. Let the part of the of thy soul which leads and governs be in um, undisturbed by the movements of by the, by the movements of the flesh whether of pleasure or pain and let it not un, uh, unite with thee but let it circumscribe itself and limit those effects on their parts but when these effects 
rise up to the mind by virtue of the other sympathy that naturally exists in a body which is all one then thou must not strive to resist the sensation for it is a for it is natural but let not the ruling part of of itself add to the sensation the opinion that is either good or bad number 27 live with the gods and he does live with the gods who constantly shows to them that his own soul is satisfied with that which is assigned to him and that it does all that the demons oh that all this demon wishes which zeus hath given to every man for his guardian and guide a portion of himself and this is this is every man's understanding and reason number 28 Art thou angry with him whose armpits stink? Art thou angry with him whose mouth smells foul? What good will this anger do thee? He has such a mouth, he has such armpits, it is necessary that such is such an emanation must come from such things. But the man has reason. It will be said that he is able, if he takes pains, to discover wherein he offends. I wish thee well it of thy discovery. Well then, and thou hast reason. By thy rational faculty, stir up his rational faculty, show him his error, admonish him. For if he listens, thou wilt cure him, and there will be no need of anger. Neither tragic, uh, neither tragic, tragic actor nor whore. The citizens is imperfect or corrupt or both. Okay. Number 29. As thou intendest to live when thou art gone out, so it is in the power to live here. But if men do not per, uh, permit thee, then get away out of life. Yet so, as if thou, thou wert suffering no harm, the house is smoky, and I quit it. Why dost thou think that this is any trouble? But so long as nothing of the kind drive me out, I remain am free, and no man shall hinder me from doing what I choose, and I choose to do what is according to the nature of the rational and social animal. Number 30. The intelligence of the universe is social. According, accordingly, it has made the inferior things for the sake of the superior, and it has fitted the superior to one another. Thou seest, thou seest now, no, thou seest how it is uh, subordinated and coordinated and assigned to everything its proper portion, and has brought together this into concord with one another the things which are the best. Number thirty-one. How hast thou behaved? Um, hithero to the gods, thy parents, um, brethren, children, teachers, to those who look uh, after thy infancy, uh, to thy friends, kinsfolk, and thy slaves. Consider it thou hast hithero behaved to all in such a way that this may be said of thee, never has wronged a man in deed or word. And called to recollection both how many things thou hast passed through and how many things thou hast been able to endure and that the history of thy life is now complete and thy service is ended and how many beautiful things thou hast seen and how many pleasures and pains thou hast despised and how many things called honorable thou hast spurned and to how many ill-minded folk thou hast shown a kind shown a kind disposition. Number 32. Why do unskilled and ignorant souls disturb him who has skill and knowledge? What soul then has skill and knowledge? That which knows beginning and end and knows the reason which pervades all substance and through all time has fixed by fixed periods. Uh, revolutions administers the universe 
number 33. Soon, very soon, thou wilt be ashes or a skeleton and either a name or not even a name. But name is sound and echo, and the things which are made, oh, which are much valued in life, are empty and rotten and trifling, and like little dogs biting one another, and little children quarreling, laughing, and then straightway weeping. But fidelity and modesty and justice and truth are, are fled up to Olympus with the widespread earth. Um, that was by Hesoid. Uh, works, etc., version uh, 197. Um, what then is there which still detains thee here, if the objects of sense are easily changed and never stand still, and the organs of perception are dull and easily receive false impression, and the poor soul itself is, is an ex exhalation from blood, but to have good repute um, amid such a world as this is an empty thing. Why then dost thou not wait in tranquility for thy end, whether it is extinction or removal to another state? And until that time comes, what is sufficient? Why, what else than a venerate, oh, what, what else than to venerate the gods and bless them and to do good to men and to practice tolerance, self-restraint, but as to everything which is beyond the limits of the poor flesh and breath, to remember that this is neither thine nor in thy power. Number 34. Okay, we still have plenty of time. Thou canst pass thy life in an equitable flow of happiness if thou canst go by the right way and think and act in the right way. These two things are common both to the soul of God and to the soul of man, and to the soul of every rational being, not to be hindered by another, and to hold good to consist in the disposition to justice and the practice of it, and in this to let thy desire find its termination. Number 35. If this is neither my own badness nor an effect of my own badness and the common wheel is not injured, why am I troubled about it? And what is the harm in, or was the harm to the common wheel? Okay. Common wheel. Okay. Let's see. Number 36. Do not be carried along inconsiderately by the appearance of things, but give help to all according to thy ability and thy fitness, and if, thy, if they should have sustained loss in matters, such as indifferent, do not Im imagine this to be a damage, for it is a bad habit, but as the old, me old man, when he went away, asked back his foster children's top, remembering that it was a top, so do thou in this care also. When thou art calling out on the rostra, hast thou forgotten man? What, what these things are? Yes, but they are objects of great concern to, the, to these people. Wilt thou too then be made a fool of these things? I was once a fortunate man, but I lost it. I know not how, but fortunate means that a man has assigned to himself a good fortune, and a good fortune is good disposition of the soul, good emotions, good actions. Number, now this is part six. The substance of the universe is obedient and compliant, and the reason which governs it has in itself no cause for doing evil, for it has no malice, nor does it do evil to anything, nor is anything harmed by it, but all things are made and perfected according to this reason. Number two, let it, be, let it make no difference to thee whether thou art cold or warm, or if thou art doing thy duty, and whether thou art drowsy or satisfied with sleep, and whether ill-spoken of or 
praised and whether dying or doing something else uh, for it is one of the acts of this life this act which we which we die it is sufficient then in this act also to do well what we have in hand number three look within let neither the peculiar quality of anything not nor its value escape thee number four all existing things soon change and will either be reduced to vapor if indeed all substances all substance is one or they will be dispersed okay or they will be dispersed number five the reason which governs oh the reason which governs knows what uh, what its own disposition is and what it does and on what material it works number six the best way of avenging thyself is to is not to become like the wrongdoer number seven take pleasure in one thing and rest in it in passing from one social act to, a, to another social act thinking of God number eight uh, the ruling principle is that which rouses and turns itself and while it makes itself such as it is and such as it wills to be it also makes everything much which happens appear to itself to be such as it wills number nine the conformity to the nature of the universe every single thing is accomplished for certain for certainly it is not not the conformity to any other nature that each thing is accomplished either a nature which externally comprehends this or a nature which is comprehended within this nature or a nature external and independent of this number 10 number 10 the universe is either a confusion and a mutual in um, involution of things and a dispersion or it is a unity and an order and providence if then it is the former why do I desire to tarry in a fortuitous combination of things and such a, and such a disorder and why do I care about anything else than how I shall at last become earth and why am I disturbed for the dispersion of my elements will happen whatever I do but if the other um, supposition is true I venerate and I am firm and I trust in him who governs number 11 when thou hast been compelled by circumstances to be disturbed in a manner quickly return to thyself and do not continue out of tune longer than the compulsion lasts it for thou wilt have more mastery over the harmony by continually recurring to it number 12 if thou hast a stepmother and a mother at the same time thou wouldst be dutiful to thy stepmother but still thou wouldst constantly return to thy mother let the court and philosophy now be the be to thee stepmother and mother return to philosophy frequently and repose in her through through whom what thou meanest meetest with in the court appears to thee tolerable and thou appearest tolerable in the court number 13 when we have meat before us and such eatables we receive an impression that this is the dead body of a fish and this is the dead body of a bird or of a pig and again that this um, Falernian is only a little grape juice and this purple robe some sheep some sheep's wool died with the blood of a shellfish such then are the impressions and they reach the, the things themselves and penetrate us oh and penetrate them and so we see what kind of things they are just in the same way ought we to act as though as through life and were there and were there are things which appear more worthy of our appropriate 
approbation, we ought to lay them bare and let and look at their worthlessness, and strip them of all the words by which they are exalted. For outward show is a wonder, is a wonderful perverter of the reason, and when thou art most sure that thou art employed about things worth thy pain, it is that it cheats thee most. Consider then what Crates said of Xenocrates himself. Number 14. We're going to have to stop it here. Um, we've been reading from um, the Harvard Classics, specifically the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. And, um, so, yeah, if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe, ring the bell so you know when I upload. Also, want to support me in any way, if you want to join the Discord server, all information will be in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.